Today we are travelling to Central America to find one of the most recognisable amphibian species on the planet, the red-eyed tree frogs. Today we'll be looking at the anatomy, habitat, diet and conservation of this species and much more. And as always, if you want to jump to a particular bit of information, the timestamps for all the different sections are in the description. The red-eyed tree frog was first identified in the 1860s by a herpetologist named Edward Cope. The frog scientific species name, Calodryas, actually comes from two Greek words, Kalos and Dryas. Together they translate roughly to beautiful wood nymph, which is a gorgeous name for such a beautiful species. Measuring just a few centimetres long and weighing only around 10 grams, the red-eyed tree frog appears as if it's giving a warning to predators of its poisonous intentions. However, whilst this frog is a trickster and has plenty of tactics to scare away potential predators, poison isn't one of them. One method that tree frogs do use to frighten away their attackers are their bright red eyes. These are not just beautiful features to attract mates, but these eyes that are so wondrous to humans have a scary side. A red-eyed tree frog's eyelids match the colour of their body, which is a lime green colour, and which an unsuspecting predator might assume to be a tasty snack, as even the colourful patterns on the sides of their body are hidden by its back legs during sleep. But when the tree frog is approached by an animal which might believe it to be a delicious meal, it can quickly open its eyes, with its bright red irises shocking the animals into questioning their choice of dinner. This vivid colouring also includes their huge webbed orange feet and their bright blue and yellow flanks. Not only do their eyes prevent them from being dinner, but it also helps them catch theirs, as their vertical eye slits help them to focus on insects and other critters whilst they move through the forest. Their eyes also have another interesting feature, as they have a webbed eyelid which can cover their eye and protect it, whilst still allowing them to see. These arboreal frogs also have suction cups for toes, and this allows them to grip onto the underside of leaves, as this is where they spend the majority of their day whilst they wait for night to fall before they can start hunting. Despite being characteristically green, red-eyed tree frogs actually start out brown, but eventually as they grow they will become this beautiful vibrant green colour. This colour, however, may change depending on their mood, a bit like a chameleon, but the change is only very small as they will turn slightly darker shade of green or a reddish brown. At maturity, the males are slightly smaller than the females, measuring only two thirds of the female's length. These little frogs can actually be found across the tropical lowlands of southern Mexico and then south throughout Central America and into northern South America. They prefer these near tropical lowlands and montane forests, but are capable of surviving in secondary forest areas, even in areas where there are less amounts of logging, as they only require a single tree near a pond that they can call home. One must-have for red-eyed tree frogs, however, is a presence of water, as these frogs are capable swimmers and absorb water through the skin on their belly. However, they are losing their habitat at a shocking rate, so their familiar image is used to promote the cause of the rainforests, even if they might not be its most endangered resident. But not even these resilient frogs can survive in areas that have been heavily degraded. The red-eyed tree frogs are primarily insectivorous and will ambush hunt crickets, flies and moths, catching them with their long, sticky tongues. However, occasionally they have been known to eat smaller frogs. Due to eating such large meals, as well as the size and shape of their heads, the tree frogs need to blink their eyes to force their food down their throat. Obviously, when they are young, they aren't yet big enough to eat the massive moths and crickets the adults eat, so instead they feed on fruit flies and pinhead crickets. In the wild, the frogs can expect to reach ages of 5 years old, but won't reach reproductive maturity until they are 3. That just gives them only a couple of rainy seasons to produce the next generation of their bloodline, so they better start breeding fast after becoming mature. The male will start by finding a well-placed perch on which they can call for females, shaking their entire body as they do so. These violent shakes are so strong that they can disturb the leaves on the branch they are sitting on. Once he's attracted a female partner, she will deposit a mass of eggs on the underside of a leaf that hangs over a patch of water and allows the male to fertilise them. However, the eggs may have multiple fathers. Each clutch may contain up to 40 green eggs, which will develop over the following week until they're ready to hatch, with the fluid from the egg washing them down the leaf and into the water below. However, if the eggs are attacked, they're capable of hatching within seconds. Even with this technique for evading predation, around half of eggs will be eaten by predators including monkeys, snakes and insects such as wasps. The eggs may also be infected with fungus. 
Such a violent technique of finding water, unlike some species that carry their offspring to a water source, can lead to some tadpoles missing the designated water source. But the tadpoles can survive up to 20 hours out of water, so this gives them time to work their way into the pool. Despite being quite large tadpoles, measuring around 48mm in length, they are still considered tasty meals for shrimps and fish, and would have to spend a month or two avoiding being eaten before they can metamorphose into a frog. Young froglets will remain a green colour during the day, but during the night they may turn purple or reddish brown. This is especially noticeable in the Panama population. When young, the froglets' eyes are yellow instead of the characteristic red, and their coloured flanks lack the white bars. They will continue to have yellow eyes until roughly two weeks after they metamorphose and will become red starting at the periphery of the eye before spreading inwards toward the pupil. When keeping red-eyed tree frogs in captivity, we need to provide them with not only a suitable environment and suitable social group, but also the correct temperature and humidity. This is particularly important because, being amphibians, they are cold-blooded and therefore cannot regulate their own body temperature. The ideal daytime temperature for these tropical amphibians is between 24 and 29 degrees Celsius, and with nights dropping no lower than 19 degrees Celsius. Humidity is important for any herptal aka reptiles and amphibians, and red-eyed tree frogs need the humidity of their enclosure to be maintained between 80 and 100% humidity. Due to their characteristic look, red-eyed tree frogs are popular pets and are often fed on a diet of crickets, roaches and worms in captivity. Despite being classified as least concerned themselves, the red-eyed tree frogs make up part of one of the most threatened ecosystems on the planet and provide a memorable ambassador for the conservation of other less appealing and well-known animals which they share their habitat with. However, being this unforgettable has its downsides, as they do face some threats from the pet trade. This is on top of their habitat being destroyed and competitive species and foreign predators being introduced. Also, like many frogs, the red-eyed tree frogs are under threat from pesticides, acid rain and fertilisers. One big issue for all amphibian species is fungal infections and other diseases. One vast group of viruses that affect amphibian populations is the ranoviruses. This is a group of viruses which can cause mass die-offs in the species they affect, and the viruses have 90-100% mortality rates in tadpoles. Infection rates are at their highest during spring and summer, when the larval amphibians are undergoing metamorphosis. Symptoms of the viruses include abnormal behaviour, especially when swimming, lethargy, swelling of the limbs, fluid accumulation in the body, skin haemorrhage, especially towards the hind area, and occasionally skin ulcers. There are no treatments or preventative vaccines for the viruses, and they spread through contaminated water, physical contact, or the ingestion of infected tissues. The viruses can also live for weeks in the environment without a host, and often also affect fish and reptiles. Natural predators for the frogs include cloudy snail-eating snakes, the black Halloween snake, the northern cat-eyed snake and the Argus snail sucker, as well as birds and bats. Increased UVB exposure from the depleted ozone layer has also been proven to be damaging to the frogs' eggs. There are protections around the trade of the frogs, however, as all Allergicless species are protected under CITES Appendix 2, where they have been listed since 2008. These protections are necessary as in the past few decades, the US alone has imported over 220,000 of these frogs. Time for this episode's bonus fact. This is a fact that I think is really interesting about a species, but doesn't quite fit into any of the sections previously mentioned in the video. The bonus fact for this episode is that a group of red-eyed tree frogs is known as an army. This is a term used for the majority of frog species and is used because of the large groups they can congregate in during breeding season. Thanks for watching this species profile. Next time I'll be travelling to Australia to find a reptilian with ancestors that lived with the dinosaurs and the animals have remained relatively unchanged since.